Rabindranath Tagore, and he talks about being in the flow and where the mind is without fear, which is what our topic is today, where the mind is without fear. And there's this combination of the mind when it's experiencing fear uh, in its various forms. Uh, but one of the things I want to I want to share quickly before we get into our Bindranath Tagore is some people have the idea that the opposite of love is fear or the opposite of fear is love. And I'm here to tell you and hopefully make clear there is no opposite to love. Everything is operating in the field of love and the face of fear shows up in many ways as does the face of love, but there's no opposite. It's not an equal and opposite because we can describe fear. We can't really describe love. You can't quite get your mind around it to be able to describe love. It's everything. It is the field and everything that happens within it can show up at different times. Sometimes it feels like fear is the opposite of love because um, it's something we don't want to feel, but sometimes love creates a situation where we feel fear in order to feel the release, living in the flow of when I release my fear and let go of trying to be in control of a situation, try that. That's scary stuff. Then you fall into the arms of love. Uh, it, I'm reminded of Reverend David, David Leonard, whom I get to teach classes with our Catching the Thread class, when he talks about Llewellyn Von Lee, one of his Sufi teachers, and people who think they're in control. Like, I'm afraid to let go because I don't want to let go of control. And Llewellyn would laugh and say, he thinks he has control. And to hear David say it is pretty funny. But um, sometimes it's the realization that we, we don't. And it's fear that can sometimes keep us in an idea of trying to be in control or that we are in control. Because we have some life experience, right? And so when we experience certain things, we have an idea of how those things might go. Like I know for sure I, I burnt my fingers many times in my career as a baker and just cooking in the house. Uh, I, it's something I definitely don't want to do. So I try to be in control and mindful as I'm going with the flow of baking to not burn my fingers. Um, so I got into this conversation once a long time ago with uh, one of my managers and my agent at the time. And we were sitting around having lunch, talking about next steps and where we were gonna book our show and, and this and that. We got into this deep philosophical conversation about love and fear. And they said, well, it's, it's fear that makes you run. That fight or flight response is the fear of being annihilated. And I said, is it the fear of being annihilated or is it love of self? Is it self-preservation? Yeah, you have an appropriate amount of, I gotta get away from this or it's gonna knock me out. So more than fear of that, it's love of self that helps us to remove ourselves from the situation. So it always comes back to love. And it sounds like a little game of semantics, but it's really bigger than that. It's a lot bigger than that. And so. Rabindranath Tagore says this, and he was born in 1861 in Calcutta. Where the mind is without fear, the head is held high. Where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards effortlessness, where the clear stream of life has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit. I love that line. I'm going to say that one again. Where the clear stream of life, the clear stream of life has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, into the heaven of freedom, let us awaken. So it's, again, it's that listen-o drop from Rumi. It's the drop becoming the ocean. It's the drop becoming, giving up this little drop. Who should be so fortunate, Rumi says, an ocean wooing a drop. It says, sell, sell and buy at once. Give this drop and, and inherit the ocean. You know, another way of saying this, where the mind is without fear, the head is held high. Paramahansa Yogananda, I've got lots of favorite sayings from Guru Paramahansa Yogananda. And one of them is, danger and I were born together and I am more dangerous than danger. Danger and I were born together and I am more dangerous than danger. Uh, I love that one. You know, and it's sometimes we have different 
varying degrees of what we would call fear. And I want to kind of parse out the difference between fear and excitement or anxiety. You know, uh, as a performing artist, uh, performing on stages all over the world, it's fun right before a performance to be standing backstage with this bit of excitement. Uh, I don't have stage fright. Some people really experience fear. But I think most of the time, once most people who experience stage fright step out onto the stage and actually start doing the work of being in the flow, living in that flow of the divine stream of sound coming through our consciousness and allowing it to sing through my body cavity like that, it's this total surrender. I'm excited, but I'm not afraid. Other times, there is this way of recognizing that my little self is going to be gone for a little while. And there's an anxiety, almost like a death, a minor death, like what St. Paul would say, I die daily. You lose what happened the day before and you step into a new way of being, this, this greater awakening, this heaven. Like Rumi says, this is heaven, come down to earth. It doesn't get any better than this. Meaning it's all here for us. Um, Reverend David and I, in our Catching the Thread class, uh, we this, this coming Wednesday will be the last of that first class on spiritual teachers, uh, but we're going to start a new class on September 2nd called Healers and Healing. It's going to be similar to that. It's Catching the Thread too. more information on the website. But during that class, there came a question of good days, bad days. What's a good day? What's a bad day? And I was reminding our students in the class and just trying to reawaken that consciousness to the idea that there's no such thing as a good day and a bad day. Every day, is an opportunity to teach us something of our, our heart and where our consciousness is in the greater awakening. Uh, so what if a really challenging day that some people would say that was a bad day. What if a really challenging day is the day that helps us prepare for something that's coming so that it, that's not such a tragedy. But what if every day is just a day and what if we experience good days because we've experienced the challenge of a day that was just not, it seemed to be a little clunky until we were reminded to go with the flow, to let ourselves let go of control, let this day be what it's going to be and participate with it to the best of our consciousness, our ability at the time. You know, so there's that excitement of stepping onto the stage. Then there's the make no mistake about it. Uh, this is a little fearful moment. When the mind is in fear, you're kind of contracted. It's really difficult to live in the larger picture, to live out beyond ideas of right and wrong, as Rumi says, in that open field, beyond the universal field into the quantum field of intelligence that precedes thought. From that bird's eye view of love that enco encompasses all of it, we can see the bigger, bigger wheels of time turning, as I've said before. There's no such thing as time. So you get out beyond it and you can allow for this give and take, this ebb and flow of days, smooth, challenging, smooth, challenging. Uh, when you get to the point where nothing really is upsetting, um, you know, you can kind of just walk between worlds, so to speak. But there's, there's also this way that we in our humanness are here to experience life in a way that we become more open and loving and trusting. We begin to trust like a bird trusts that it can float on the air, the invisible air. And as I'm speaking to you through a wire, in some cases that allows for this connection with a, a, a cordless wireless situation, uh, it's through the ether. You can't see it, but the sound is being carried because there's something between us. There is that light that we talk about, that light and that energy that carries other energy. So what if in our going with the flow, we recognize that we are a sounding board, we are light, we are an energy that carries other energy and get busy with the idea of pulling in more light. Like at the end of these programs, the last little section is a, a spiritual practice of bringing light into the body and participating more fully with what we have so that we can be in that flow, that living flow, that life-giving flow. You know, so stepping out onto a stage was, is fun. Uh, it's a little exciting. I don't have stage fright, but it's a little like, okay, let's go do it. 
Uh, however, I mean, I would compare that to when I was younger, uh, when I would first be able to take the car out. My parents would have really strict times when you had to bring the car back. And they wanted you home, if they said it was midnight or 11 o'clock, they wanted you in the door at midnight or 11 o'clock, not five after. So fear for me was, oh my gosh, it is five after the hour I was supposed to be home and I'm just pulling in the driveway now. And there was no way, the fear would be opening the front door slowly, but there on the couch in the living room, which is where you would step right into, would be my mom. And if you think the uh, two-headed dog of the Harry Potter movie guarding that stone, if you think that's scary, not as scary as my mom waking up with the third degree, you know, and then not being able to have the car for, for two weeks. No matter what the deal was, no matter why you were late, what happened, doesn't matter. So that was a little scary, you know, things like that. Other things are even more scary, you know, watching a loved one go through a challenge. Um, we can think of so many things that are definitely scary because we want to control the outcome. And sometimes we don't have that that control. Sometimes we really do. Uh, I remember, I remember a time um, I was the secretary treasurer of our meditation group when I lived in Pittsburgh. And I was going to help one of the other uh, meditators to, we had a little bookstore to do inventory for the bookstore and just kind of go through the books and make sure everything was, was in order and things like this. And um, I had just stopped doing this little job singing in kinder cares and daycare centers like that. It was called music time. I would go in and sing, you know, songs about numbers and letters and animals and all our wheels on the bus go round and round. Everybody's heard that song. Yeah. I had to stop because for the six months that I did that for friends, I had sinus infections. I had sore throats. I was sick constantly. And as a singer, I couldn't have that. So I had to quit doing it. So I stopped doing that. I get over my last sinus infection and my friend who's, who's going to do the accounting with me calls me on the phone and she said, are you still coming? But her throat was all hoarse. I was like, oh, you're still coming. I said, What's wrong with you? And she said, I have a sore throat in her little gravelly voice. And I said, you know what? Let's do it next week when you feel better because I just got over getting sick. And we were doing this work for the group and for, for God. And you know, when you're in service to others, you're in service to the God and others. And it's important to remember that. But we had this commitment and I was afraid that I was gonna get a sore throat. So I didn't wanna go. And all I kept thinking about was my throat, my throat, I'm not going, I'm not going. So I convinced her to, let's do it next week. And I earlier had gotten a phone call from a friend to meet for dinner. So I thought, okay, I'm not doing that, great. I'm gonna go meet my friend. On my way to meet my friend for dinner, um, I get hit from behind on the freeway and I end up with whiplash and a concussion. And my throat, the muscles in my throat were completely stretched and weird for months after that, long time. And I'm fine now, that was many years ago. But I, this person was very intuitive too as, as a meditator and I, I remember her I got home, I went to the hospital and got checked out and got all this stuff and I came back to my house. It was now 11 o'clock at night and my phone rings. And as soon as I answer the phone, my friend says, are you hurt badly? I didn't say anything. She didn't even, she didn't even know. I was gonna say she didn't know, she did know. Uh, so I thought about that often. When I'm committed to do a certain thing, I try to keep my commitments. Sometimes we have flexibility, of course, but sometimes, is it because I need flexibility to get something done or is it because I'm afraid? And I never let fear dictate what I will and will not do anymore because I probably would not have gotten a sore throat had I gone. But in hindsight, my mind was so powerful, it created a situation, right? To teach me a lesson. You know, so Paramahansa Yogananda talks about that where the mind is without fear. First, you know, we have to be able to take our thoughts and turn them to something else. When you've got a little fear groove going, uh, the first thing that happens is it, is it comes in as a suggestion. But the more we allow ourselves to think that thought, it gets into our super conscious mind, which is a lot deeper in the root system of our consciousness, let's say. Once it starts working in the subconscious mind, 
we're not as aware of it, it's a little bit of a danger zone because then it goes into super conscious realm, which is what I'm talking about. My fear of getting a sore throat was in my subconscious brought back to my conscious mind through my limbic system, my limbic brain, the memory of, I just got over getting sick. She's sick. Therefore I'll probably get sick. My fear, it was with such a charge that I had it, that it had to come back to me. So whether we send love out or fear out, or any idea out that either serves us or doesn't serve us, it works along the same system. It works along the same system, but there's nothing more instantaneous than love coming in and saving the day. So changing our thoughts from fear to love before we get it into the subconscious mind, then into the super conscious realm, which will pull it together somehow. Catch that thought. And a good way to do that is to, to train your brain to have a fear response. Uh, a response to fear that flips it and makes you think of something else immediately. Catch it as soon as it comes in, like catching the thread of all these great spiritual teachers. Every one of them had a way of stopping a thought before it gets too far. It's kind of like before I got through the living room, uh, my mom would stop me. Where were you? Why were you late? Uh, and I'd have to hash all that out there. I didn't have time to try to get away with it. You know, we don't get away with things in, in consciousness. Where our thoughts go, that's what we receive. It's what we receive. Um, if it's fear of interacting with another person, what are they going to say? What are they going to do? Surrender all that to the infinite. You know, just last week um, or a couple of weeks ago, we had Michelle Harkey, who's going to be teaching a, a workshop on August 29th, just for a, an intro to the work of Byron Katie, where you start asking these questions. Uh, introspect more. Catch your thought. What are you thinking? Why are you thinking it? And just shift the thought from the thing that's going to be the grinding fear to opening up to the flow of something different instead of trying to control the thing. Um, whatever it is that you fear, take your mind away from it, Yogananda says, and leave it with God. Leave it with source. Have faith that the infinite source will take care of it. Much suffering is due simply to worry, he said. Uh, every night before you go to sleep, affirm, I am safe, I am protected, and mentally surround yourself with light, with the light of spirit, which is what our Qigong practices help, help to remind us we are surrounded. Uh, when, a, when a negative thought comes in to intrude, just grab it. Um, most often fear is about you know, being out of control. And, and mostly, as we said before, life is about the, avoid, the avoidance of pain and the experience of, of bliss. And it's surrendering to that supreme trust in the love of the universe, in the love of the universe. I am so excited to share this, this news. A friend of mine in the Bay Area, who is a meditator of Paramahansa Yogananda, one of the most beautiful souls ever, ever. his name is Chris, I just received this email from him this morning where he's sharing that he is going to become a, a monk in the Self-Realization Fellowship Order. And I'm so excited about this. And in, in his big email, he's trying to cover lots of different things. And he just put all the questions that people are asking him about what this means. And, and one of the parts was, um, what does this step mean for me? And he said, it's, it's a letting go of who I am in order to become what I can fully become. One of my favorite poems, as he said, is On Love by Khalil Gibran. And Khalil Gibran was born in 1883. And he's a, a Lebanese poet. Um, then he wrote the book, The Prophet, on most people. So this is taken from that. And one of the stanzas reads, this, this, is, this is really important because people think that as soon as you surrender to love, everything gets smooth and easy. That's not necessarily true. Again, it's not all good and it's not all bad. It's all an experience, it takes us to the highest highs and sometimes the depths of what is lurking in our open heart. Sometimes it's that shadow work. But he, he said it so beautifully and he just took an excerpt from this, this poem and it's, but if in your fear you would seek only love's peace and love's pleasure, then it is better for you that you cover your nakedness and pass out of love's threshing floor into the seasonless world where you shall laugh, but not all your laughter, and weep, 
but not all your tears. And he says, this makes me cry and I'm just so happy for him. I want to weep all my tears and laugh all my laughter. I think this life will give me that opportunity. So where can we be courageous with heart in the face of fear, being courageous to, to dive into the depths of love where love will take us to cry all our tears and to laugh all our laughter instead of trying to play in this safety zone of experience, in this safety zone. You know, right now during this global pandemic, there's a situation where there's a constant drone of be afraid, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. Get out beyond that into the quantum field of where you can work from inside, the inside out and balance on that world of, I bring forth to this world from my inner knowing what I most wanna see and what is right for me to have in this world of love. It doesn't mean I'm not gonna experience anything, but if we just kind of squash it, the highs aren't too high, the lows aren't too low, and like, well, that's good too. You're finding balance and equilibrium, but there's a way that love is gonna call you into your heart, into your awakened heart, but knowing that you can trust the infinite as you allow yourself to go with that flow and experience it all. Um, all these things shall love do unto you, that you may know the secrets of your heart, Kalil Gibran. I'm going to post, it's called On Love. We're going to post it on our, our Facebook page and also uh, on the website. I might even stick it in the newsletter this week, On Love. But he also says, all these things shall love do unto you, that you may know the secrets of your heart, and in that knowledge become a fragment of life's heart. And in that knowledge become a fragment of life's heart. Yeah, but if you would only seek the peace and the joy and the, you're missing, you're missing all the tears, all the laughter. And um, to surrender and allow yourself to cry, cry tears, that's one that feels like nobody wants to do that. People want to rescue us from our tears. And sometimes we got to cry those too. But the supreme thing is entrusting and knowing that that infinite source of love is with you always, no matter where you are and what you're experiencing, get out of the little mind, the small mind that wants to know and merge it with the supreme field of love with the one who is holding it all and go with that flow, let it go where it will take you. And may you know that peace, may you know that joy and that understanding.